Dr. Daniels, we're taking a look at some data that we've been researching that shows that Christians are losing their share of U.S. population. Now, that's probably more on the downside. There are some upsides to that research, though, not the least of which showing the black population of Christians bucking the trend. Are you surprised? Uh, I am, um, because I would have thought that um, the African-American population would follow the national trend, um, because it does seem like that our society is becoming um, more secular in, in many senses. Um, but the, at least the survey by uh, Pew um, mm -hmm. shows the difference. You know, I, I want to also make the point that it's not about drawing this line in the sand saying that one church or one population of Christians is better than others. It's saying that here's this segment of Christian population that's that's flourishing and it's because this population does more than just religion in the churches. Would you agree? I would, but I also, I also think that um, in the direction that you're going, um, that the black church has gained a lot of credibility for some sectors um, because of both um, the caring for those that are uh, vulnerable in society, advocating um, for justice, um, and even not only justice for African Americans, but justice for others. There are segments that do that. Um, some high-profile pastors being willing to both support uh, people and fights against um, injustice, um, including uh, police brutality, that, that you, you, you can see that the church is more uh, than being concerned about its members, but that it's being concerned about society. So I do think that that makes a difference. Uh, one of the things I love to do when I'm on social media is to read a lot of the responses to these research, uh, to these data points. And, and they make the point that the black church is the place that has always affirmed African American life. The importance of that is somewhat undervalued, do you think? I do. Um, e even though our culture has gone through a change as African Americans become more and more prominent throughout a variety of sectors of the society, um, the black church as an institution that is both owned, operated, um, as well as funded um, by African Americans has made a difference within history. But, but I would want to say that the African American church is not monolithic. Mm -hmm. So while um, the overall trend shows that the black church is not um, going into the, the level of disaffiliation of, um, as other churches within the society, um, that, um, that is not consistent across the board. So there are not only congregations, but there are also denominations um, that are not matching that, that they are going into decline. Um, that is balanced out by other congregations um, that are being able to reach new people, reach new communities, and also uh, give a positive uh, Perspective on what the black church is and what the black church can do. And then, the la then the larger culture, um, that, that while there is a division within uh, hip-hop, especially rap music, mm -hmm. on how religion is perceived in general, uh, and the black church in particular, um, that there are still the segments that are speaking of God, um, speaking of religious values, and that just, I believe, reinforces uh, for a younger population that might not even be churched, um, but they affiliate um, themselves with uh, Christianity. And, and Dr. Daniels, you anticipated my next question and, and bringing in the, 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 new, the newest cultures, like, like hip hop, you're attracting an important data point secularly, that the share of millennials is growing and is becoming more a, a part of the church, an active part, what does this say about the future of, of Christianity and the black churches and, and overall? Well, well, two things I want to make. That, well, first of all, is that at least the Pew study um, was focusing on a f affiliation that you identify uh, with Christianity. Um, so it was not focusing on church membership. Um, so, so, so the affiliation is a very positive trend because mm -hmm. at least people are in the orbit and they're open and they're not hostile um, and receptive, not only open but also receptive in many regards. The second part is that you have some um, millennial ministries, I call them. These are congregations often founded by millennials um, that are seeking to attract millennials. And then you have some young uh, Gen Xers, that generation uh, right before the millennials, who are also doing the same thing. And that, that supply has been able to create a new context um, that allows people to be able to find a ministry that is um, tailored to them, receptive to them, dealing with their culture and their ideas, um, and they then can find a place where if they didn't exist, then you're asking people to, in a sense, 
fit into a church or a ministry that was created for baby boomers, for instance, um, and asking them to change. Um, but these millennial congregations have created these great opportunities, which uh, bodes well for the future. All right, Dr. Daniels, let's leave it on that high note. I thank you so much for joining us and bringing us this perspective and insight. I look forward to speaking with you again very soon. A mutual, and you have a great day. Thank you. God bless. God bless.